What in the heck, friends? Oh my freaking gosh. Look at that thing. It's like a Christmas tree in the sky. Friends, I am just going to let that record for a minute. I have got to try again to go wake Paula up. This is just too unbelievable. That is not behind anything. There is not a cloud in the sky. It, it is what it is. I can't help whatever it is that I filmed, friends. I just can't help whatever this is. So hi there, Dave Dobbs here. It's the 29th of June, 2017. And I'm on the Glastonbury Festival site. And it's after the festival. And uh, it's great to be back in the UK. And I've had a great festival. I've been, I've been working in a bar called the Gorilla Bar, which has been a lot of fun, in Shangri-La. Um, been a bit of a, been a bizarre weekend started and just continued in absolute bliss it started you know the really high point you get to sometimes saturday night sunday night where you've kind of got through your attention meeting new people a bit anxious it's got a lot, of, a lot of an old story going on and the party sort of starts really kicking off and it starts getting more intense and by the weekend you've kind of cleared out all the cobwebs met all your all your favorite mates or maybe you've made loads of new friends or maybe you've just been blown away by the massive amount of art you know, and music and Creativity, just the, the whole mind blower, the whole experience, Glastonbury. And then, of course, you know, um, Shangri La this year, the theme was climate change, which is very interesting. As many of you know, kind of my kind of views on, on climate change. It's not that I'm against it, I just think there's something much bigger going on than just climate change. And I think we're not seeing that bigger thing, or we're starting to see it, perhaps. And um, and I just thought this was such a fitting place to start this video, because I'm going to give you the dates that you're looking for. I want to do that now. And I know I don't know what's going to happen exactly at those dates. I can just tell you more or less what's going on, you know, with the whole kind of nemesis system, the Buru, and, 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 and the specific dates I think are going to be most important. And I've been, as you know, I've been kind of, I've been giving you the information so you can calculate those dates, but I've not really wanted to give you those specific dates, not until I got Glastonbury out of the way, until I come back to England and sort of like, uh, because, you know, obviously you can work it out. I've made it very easy so you can work it out, but I don't really, I, I didn't really want to put a specific date on that because it is heavy and it is scary. But you've also got to remember that we've come through, what have I got down here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got at least, we've had at least 12 flybys, um, five of which I've predicted now, the last five which I've predicted, um, exactly when, maybe I've been three, four, four days out at the most, but we've got past all of those flybys so far, pretty much unscathed. I know that, you know, when we went over the earthquake on the 22nd of November last year, 2016, it was, we, that was right where it's, we, we were expecting Nemesis to be. We knew we were going to have a massive bump. Just like the massive bump when, it, when the system first came in. Do you remember the big earthquake on, the, I think it was on the 27th of February 2010. It was listed as an 8.8, .8, one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded that, that didn't occur with, vol vol with a volcano, you know, but it was basically the largest single earthquake ever recorded. Until obviously, um, that was in Chile. In, in like I say 2010 February the 27th and then and then we come one year and 12 days later and we have Fukushima on the 11th of March 2011 which was originally listed as a 9.6 but then it seemed to be downgraded as, as a 9 I remember Nexus magazine listed it as I'm sure Nexus magazine with their big conspiracy stories you know the magazine that's, ba that's, that's banned in America I think they listed it as originally as a 9.6 with no pre-tremor. So there was no feasible way to understand how the largest earthquake occurred without any pre-tremor. That was what was so un unusual. And that's why a lot of people think it was a conspiracy theory. And I personally think it was a bit of a conspiracy theory that they knew it was going to happen, but they didn't warn Japan. And this is why I put this message out, because you had that first bump point on the exit point on the 22nd of November 
2016, last year. You know it, you had it, we experienced it. And so we know one year and around about 12 days later, which I suppose will be um, Monday the 4th of December 2017. So around about that time we can expect a big bump point, a big earthquake point, a very big earthquake point. But we have to remember that even though, you know, New Zealand was massively affected on the 22nd of November 2016, we also have to remember that a big line of that coastline literally rose up about two metres. And so when we consider that, and that's why I've got the Mendits behind me really in this shot really, because we can see in the last time we had big geolog geological changes, the land that rose and the land that fell away, fell down, the land that is buoyant on, 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 on magma, basalt, basaltic magma. And granite floats on that. And there we saw New Zealand demonstrating its ability to float on, on that magma. It rose two metres. If the ocean floor had collapsed two metres, there would have been a massive tsunami. But actually, it rose. And that's significant. That's really, really significant. Because that offers New Zealand an enormous amount of information about understanding what's going to be, where it's going to be safe. Because it's, it's going to be very short, it's going to be very quick, it's going to be a blip and then we're going to be past it. And we don't know the effect it's going to really be. No one knows. And I don't want to put the fear, fear of God through you to say this is things coming, but we saw what happened in Fukushima. We, we know that we, we've charted every part of this movement. Um, and, so, and so if, if we're not prepared on any level and we know what's going to happen and we know that the nuclear reactors could spill open during this time, and if, if, if we could enact some forms of precaution, would that be, would that be negative? Would that be trying to fear monger? If we could see something big was going to happen and we could do preventative exercises to limit damage limitation, that's what I'm talking about, limit the damage, limit the, limit the, 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 the cost to human life, limit the cost to, to everything that we can in this, to try and go through this as smoothly as possible. And obviously where this is going to end kind of with, with, uh, with Jeremy Corbyn and what you've just achieved, what the country has just achieved with this massive turnaround. But before we do that, we need to go through all the sightings that we've had so far. And so you know how I made my predictions, you know, because they weren't predictions, they were just counting the days, you know, that's all I've been doing and I've been trying to show you that. So we, you know, we started off, you know, the, the sightings that I originally had, that I pieced together, that took me about six months to a year to uncover, and I had to uncover them through this process of being a, a kind of detective work. I had to find them slowly but surely. I had to find the patterns. When I started finding the patterns, you know, I started finding, it's like, that's how the periodic table, that's how elements were discovered on the periodic table. They weren't all just, just discovered. They were mathematically created, they were, they were mass, mathematically calculated because of, um, because of the atomic density of specific um, atoms, you know, spe specific elements they'd found and they started calculating the reactions and the, and the atomic density and they started working out where different things would be kind of in balance and that that's place where they, they could hold together, you know, and, and be stable and, and through this process that's what, how they discovered many of the other elements, they were discovered mathematically and I discovered these dates mathematically by working out the patterns and then I started researching and finding specific dates. And the first one I found, 5th of August 2011, which is this shot. What's the date there? 5th of August. Same thing, two tails. And then it was the 2nd of February 2012, which was this shot. Then it was the 28th of February 2013, which was this shot. And then of course it was the 14th of October 2013, which was the 
most amazing shot where it appeared like it appeared on the 21st of January 2017. Now that 14th of October 2013 shot, this incredible shot, It, it, you know, it, it was one day out of the exact prediction that was on, on the time chart. When I discovered it, I couldn't believe it. You see the original footage? It's barely got any views. It's silent. Fairly bright at first. I thought it was the moon. Size-wise, maybe the size of maybe quarter moon. thing is the mist is uh, just moves with it the whole way. There's the ocean below. Still moving. Constant speed. It's the most, it was the most, to me, it was the most incredible piece, a shot of Nibiru ever shot up until, um, 20, the, well, the, the, the Matt Rogers shot on the 15th of August, 2016, last year. And what was the other incredible one? Well, the 21st of January, 2017. And now, of course, I'd predicted that. Uh, that massive one but let's keep going so 14th of, of October 2013 then we had the 23rd of November 2014 and that was quite an amazing shot then we had the 8th of June 2015 I predicted because of all of those and I found those dates and I started working out there was a kind of 198 day, 200 day cycle. I started piecing together, um, you know, in, um, I, I started piecing together in I did various animation packages just to try and work out the maths of, of this cycle and how it all fitted together and find a way to fit it all together. Of course, we just didn't know. We would know the, roughly by the size of it on uh, you remember I predicted on the 22nd of December 2015 that it would fly by and it would be big, there'd be floods, there'd be all sorts of things going with it. And of course it really did flood in England, we had sinkholes open up, we had, the, we had the most incredible storms we'd ever seen, some of the biggest storms we'd ever seen. It was, rich, re, it was beginning to reach the crescendo and of course it's all starting now, as you can imagine. We're going to get to that. So I said on the 22nd and then we had on the 20th of December 2015. Fourth of December, two thousand two thousand and fifteen. What the hell is that? Oh my freaking gosh! I gotta get out here. What is that? Holy moly! Holy moly! That's no freaking airplane. December twenty fourth, twenty fifteen. Central Indiana, this is Becky Lewis. Oh my freaking God. Are you kidding me? 
Sally, bar the doors. That is no freaking airplane, friends. Let me tell you, that is no freaking airplane. That's in the southeast, where I always get the red glow. Holy God. Shit, I can't even hold it still. Please, excuse my language. Oh my gosh. I am just tripping out. What the frick? Oh my freaking gosh. Friends, it is going to go behind that stuff and I won't be able to see it anymore. Oh my gosh. And then, of course, I've made a video saying, okay, if this thing is really exiting the sun, as I'm, as I'm predicting it, to, it is, at some point or other, we're going to see a 100-day point because the point that has been closest to the sun as this thing is going over the top of the sun, the point of the Nibiru cycle that has been closest to the sun as the Nemesis system has been going over the sun, the point that was closest to the sun, if it was truly on an exit trajectory, that point would cease to be closest to the sun because it would also be moving, moving away from the sun with the whole system. So I put this out, and do you remember Becky Lewis posted, I believe, on the 29th of March 2016 that we would see it, it would pop into view, and sure enough, it popped into view. That's when I was really beginning to, beginning to triangulate the position of Nemesis itself, the dwarf planet. Sighting on the 23rd then of June 2016, which of course showed up very tiny. We were on the far side of the solar system to it, but nonetheless, it was still going to poke up because that's the characteristic and the way it works. Because when the Nibiru system, when the Nibiru comes into view, it is the furthest point away from the sun in the whole system. It's the only part of the whole system you can really see, apart from special shots at specific times in the cycle. So then we come to the my next big, big prediction. I said, well, when we can't, when we pass the on the you know the, on the next on my timeline that you know the, of literally counting the days, the next big timeline was obviously obviously the 25th of January 2017. And obviously, you know, I uh, you know I have to keep using this data and this timeline because it's so essential. Because there's new people coming to this all the time, and they need to fully understand how this has been calculated. And so obviously the 20, 20, it flew by on the 21st, the day after the inauguration of Trump. And we saw, you know, the Mexicans saw it as the, as the fist of God. They, they, they didn't see it as Nibiru, but nonetheless it was exactly as we saw it coming in on the, um, on the 14th of October 2013. Same form came in exactly in and then it flew by. And of course we were right next to it then. but. Still, the whole, if you like, the whole orbital of the Nibiru system was still very much between us, between Earth and the Sun. Even though it's dropping, it's the, it's, the whole system is dropping below the ecliptic of our solar system, the last part of it to drop through is that top. Uh, orbital um, pathway of Nibiru, the furthest orbiting planet of the Nemesis system, the last bit to plunge through the ecliptic. And this is what we're coming to now. And so when we, let's turn this over now and um, 
Well, you know, I did make one last prediction recently, and that was obviously the 29th of April 2017. That was the last one I made. So that's five flybys that I've predicted. Sorry, it's getting a bit dark here. I will try and put the colour up a little bit, but it's. I want you to keep an eye on the Mendix behind me as well, especially the, the, all, of the, all of you people in Bristol and all the surrounding areas, you know, just to just keep your eyes on that as well. Um, so if we take the 21st of the 1st, because I want to try and give you the most accurate understanding of when we're most likely to get the effects of this. So if we take the 21st of the 7th, 21st of the 1st, 21st of January 2017, and we, and we add 100, 198 days, we come to the 7th of August 2017. But that's the point, we're going to be able to see it at uh, points before that. But that's it's going to be it's going to be uh, as I'm understanding it's going to be very visible and obviously they're going to chemtrail it away. But in non-NATO countries, you're going to be able to see that really quite clearly. It's going to be a staggering sight around that. Friends, this is too unbelievable. This is just too unbelievable to 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 be true. I tried to wake Paula up. I can't get her awake. Friends, this is not behind anything. It's up in the sky. There's no trees. There's no clouds. Look at this thing. Look at it. What in the heck, friends? Oh my freaking gosh. Look at that thing. It's like a Christmas tree in the sky. Friends, I am just going to let that record for a minute. I have got to try again to go wake Paula up. This is just too unbelievable. Look at that thing. I want to zoom in. Okay, well, I guess I'm zoomed in all the way. Friends, that is not behind anything. There is not a cloud in the sky. Not a cloud in the sky. I hope it doesn't go out of view before I get back, but I just have to let that record. I got to try and wake Paula up again. Oh, my gosh. And there's not that much battery left on this. Friends, I will stay up and watch this as long as I can. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Back soon. I don't know what to say about it. I really don't. I mean, it, it is what it is. I can't help whatever it is that I filmed, friends. I just can't help whatever this is. But I know it is so astounding and amazing. And I know I feel so grateful to be here in these days, friends. And I, I feel that now more than ever is the time to lift each other up in love and do everything we can to help in any way that we can, anywhere that we can. This is one of the most astounding things that I have ever seen in my life, friends. And I just can't help but feel so grateful to be here and then it's it's it, but it's heading it's in our night sky at that point but it's illuminated and it's going to start heading in towards earth but as i'm as i'm seeing it i think we're going to be quite far away from the from the planet naburu itself i think it's going to be I think it's, I think it's going to be far below us, quite considerably below us, because that, that lower aspect, but nonetheless, there is a considerable chance that, that if we, if we, if we, if we take, so we, if we go 7th of August, let's, let's do this in a different way, so we take the 21st of the 1st, 2017. We add 198 days, we have the 7th of August. That's when we know this thing is going to come into, that's when it's most likely going to come into view next, when we're going to start seeing things. But if we add another 198 days to that, we get to the 21st of the 2nd, 2018. And that's when it's going to be in view in the same sort of fashion, but much bigger, when it's past us. So if we go from the... 21st of the 2nd, 2018, 
and we minus 50 days, that's going to equivalent to a quarter cycle of the Nibiru orbit, or, orbit around Nemesis. A quarter cycle. And we see it right when it's furthest away in, in, from our perspective to the sun in its cycle around, the, around Nemesis. And I know that's a bit awkward to understand, but that's where we see it. But where we see it doesn't mean it's where it, mo it most affects us. Where it's most likely to affect us, affect us is if we have to then take 50 days from the 21st of the 2nd, 2018, which brings us to the 2nd of January, 2018. If we're going to get an eclipse from this, and a really close flyby that could, ge that, that could geologically affect this Earth, then that date is around about the 2nd of January. But it's heading, it's moving very fast. What the vision I had that made me, that made me uncover this whole thing in the, in the whole place, where it said, this is what the fuss is all about, and it showed it to me. It came towards Earth, it eclipsed the sun, it eclipsed the sun as it came in. I didn't know how long, it, how long it was for, but in my dream I was very scared because there was no sun and I didn't know why there was no sun. But when I was shown what it was and it said, this is what all the fuss is all about, it came towards the Earth. I know this was just a dream and I realised it, it might not be anything, but it's always kept a kind of a feeling of grace in my heart because as it gets closer and closer to the Earth, the Earth has this huge, great kind of crescent of light appear on the left-hand side as I was looking at it. And then it just this crest of light just moved across and consumed the whole Earth in light. And the Earth moved kind of left. And this and Nibiru just carried on and went straight past it. Which means that though we go straight through the line of this, if you like, its orbital line, and we go straight across it, we're at the least place, we're right at the other end. You know, it's literally, we actually go, we actually just move out of the way of it before it passes. That's what I saw in my crazy dream that made me discover this whole thing. Whether, it got, whether it's all like that, whether this thing is moving like that, whether it flies so close, I don't know, but it didn't hit. And there was no debris that I could see. You know, I know it sounds crazy to recite from a dream, but when I started discovering this thing and flying by, you know, I started panicking and I kept having to come in, coming back to that. And where I asked, I said, it misses, doesn't it? And the answer I got was literally, yes, it misses. Word for word, this is, yes, it misses. It is deemed you are not a planet of war, but you are a planet subverted with war. And that will now change. And there was, I felt enormous. <sighs> But okay, so if we go back another, if we take from the, so we know that if we are going to get anything, the only possible time that we could have that eclipse, and then this thing is gone, is on the 2nd of January 2018. Round about that day. It could be, could be a week either side, but you know, I've been two, the most I've ever been out is four days out. Normally the most is two days out. And then even then there was two sightings e there were two sightings two days either side of that sighting so which two days you could say i was bang in the middle of it you could say i was bang on couldn't you really if you're absolutely honest you could say i was bang on on the sort of like on the 25th okay you saw it on the 21st but come on guys you know there's not many people out there giving you flybys over and over and over and actually producing the evidence and so you, we've got to take um we've got to take another 50 days off that second of jan to come back to the 24th of September 2017, which is, we're going to be equally close to the other side of it, but to me that's going to be below the ecliptic, the, the ecliptic at that time. I'm praying that it's going to be below, but nonetheless, we are going to be in the vicinity of a lot of the debris that's in the, in the tail of this. We're going, to, we're going to be very close to a lot of debris, and you saw when, when it was coming in, Remember, I'm saying it's the first, but it's going to begin its entrance on the 7th of August, um, 2017. And what you remember, last year on the 15th of August, um, 2016, we had that Matt Rogers shot exactly where we were expecting to see it. And then we had all those kind of like shots from Jeff P where you saw it coming in in the night sky, not coming from the sun, but the other way where it's coming in the night sky. And you kept seeing those four dark silhouetted tails of it. But Matt Rogers, 
admittedly did catch the best shot on the 15th of, 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 of August last year and it was midnight wasn't it, it was nearly midnight, it was 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night or something and it was the most staggering sight and you saw it as if it was coming towards the earth, it wasn't actually, it was spinning off but from that perspective it looked as if it was coming towards earth just like it looked on, on the 14th of October 2013 it looked as if it was coming towards Earth and you could see the boulders silhouetted by the, light, the sunlight that was just below the horizon. Well, it, was, it wasn't just below, but the sun was obviously a long since set, but that whole tail was catching the light, which was lighting up all those, all that debris in its tail. And, um, and, and we're going to be close to that, around about, you know, you know the, I, I'm saying, you know, on my date calendar, when I add those days and I take 50 days off, it's the 24th, but it's it's kind of you could say it's more like 49 days. So it, it you know it's 23rd, 24th, isn't it? 23rd, 24th of September, which is the most likeliest chance when this thing really comes in, and that's gonna you know you can bury gold under the ground. And when you go back and get it afterwards, it's going to be of value still, you know, in, and and it's going to be of, of value to all around the world because we we've always had gold as a primary value in this world, but. When we have our fiat-based currencies, which are based on their speculative value, and everything, everyone pulls their money, pulls their money into a safe haven at the same time, uh, fiat-based currency is going to struggle in that. And so that's why there's so much attention to building these, all these new currency systems because can the can fiat-based currencies weather this storm? And so, 20, you know, it, it, we don't know what's going to happen on the on the 23rd of September, 2000. And 17. When I think about it, I do tremble a little bit, and I realise it's a big thing. But unless we're willing to address these big problems, and you have to also understand, there's a very big thing just happening before that, because obviously NASA is announcing that they're going to. Um, well, I'll, I'll just very briefly read you the, read you the story. I can. I'll just read you the last line of the story and just give you a brief um, synopsis of what I'm kind of talking about here. Because we have to understand how our governments are going to utilise and what they're going to try and do with this information if asteroids do come through our atmosphere. What are we going to expect? What we're going to expect is that our governments are going to try and, and the media are going to try and turn this into an alien invasion. And um, dawn on set and NASA, NASA releases stunning image of the planet illuminated by a silver, by a sliver of sunlight. And um, it's the Cassini spacecraft. And if I come back to here on the last line, and this seems to be a quote in the Daily Mail, and it says, in September, Cassini's mission will be brought to a dramatic conclusion as the spacecraft will be directed to dive into the giant, the ringed giant. And so we are going to be colliding a satellite into a planet that we know very little about. And that's going to be on the, I believe that's going to be on the 17th of September. And that's a very significant time to be conducting really quite an invasive manoeuvre on another planet you don't know much about. And that should, that, that really needs to be, that really needs to be considered what that, what the intentions of that is at that, at this specific time. How are they going to play this? You know, they're going to, where, this is going to be a massive attempt to drive this whole plane into um, into into a massive, great, aggressive war, and we're not too sure who the enemy is going to be, and we don't know what's going to be the precursor, or how they're going to where they're going to draw the kind of notion of where the enemy is coming from, but they're going to have a story for sure. And it's not going to be Nabooru's tail. And so it's a case question of, you know, who's left over? 
Who stays behind at the end to clean up the party? And who makes it through this and how we make this through this and whether it's a really easy passage or whether it's a very difficult passage. And I can promise you this country has turned everything around with what happened in that election result. Our children, our children, for our fucking future worth having, not one decided by useless politicians. Just shut the door on the way out. So when you when you absolutely know that 49% of the of the people are going to vote, when you know it's actually 50-50, but but the, one way or the other for Brexit or Europe or for Brexit or Europe, but. Half, but one percent of those won't be able to vote if because they they will be at their church and this is their church. This is a place of pilgrimage. So you, you've eliminated, literally eliminated a, a proportion of, of the British public's ability to vote or holding it on that day because they cannot vote because they are they're, they're, in, they're in ceremony. They are literally in ceremony. And that's why it's illegal. That's why that vote was illegal. And that's why I couldn't come to Glastonbury on that day, because I would have been part of a show which was, which was being used to, to break the alliance. And you remember I told you about the dream I had, and then, where I was shown Britain as the Titanic. And it said, you, Britain comes to a juncture. It said it stays in Europe and weathers the storm. Or it cuts its anchors. But if it cuts its anchors, it will be heading west. And if it, if it cuts its anchors and heads west, its fate is sealed. Because you haven't looked at your new dinner plate of what you're going to replace it, you're just going to kick. We're just being asked to kick our European dinner plates and all those allies are away in disgust without putting anything else on the table and saying, well, how are we going to feed our kids? All our, you know, all those things that we died for in, the, in, in our, our ancestors and our, our, our died for in the Second World War so that we might have these sovereign rights and that they may be more robust than we ever realised you know, what, what, what they die for, to put in place. All that lobbying after the Second World War to bring about this unity. And I know bankers have subverted the whole European Union. I see what's happened with Greece. But much of this is driven by NATO. And much of this is driven by bankers. And we need to be targeting specifically what's bringing this whole system down and what's plaguing it, not just kicking the whole thing out. They call it throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We don't want to be doing that now. We want to be clever. We want to be... We want to be clever here. We, I, I like Europe. That's why I had to go to France when I did this. And I tell you, what, I, I, as soon as actually that result came back, I came here. And you know, I've, I've, I've kind of built a life in France a little bit. And when I, when I come back here, I feel that as well. You know, I, I want my country to survive this. I've devoted my entire life to trying to make this country survive this system, even though most people think I'm crazy to see it and charter it. Oh my closest friends, my allies, people I've loved all my life, the legacy that has brought me to here at this time. I don't want to see that go. And when I felt that, I tell you, this country came into great joy. I felt it. You all felt it just like you felt it plummet on that Brexit vote day at the Glitz Festival. You felt it. How many of you had tears in your eyes now and then like I have tears in my eyes now? And how many of you cried with joy on the day of that vote? felt the lifting of that veil, felt that, felt that you changed something, that something, that 
you'd stop some real dark deviant pathway because it's been so much at the last moment you've really massively aided the process of us getting through this and so but I have to follow this pathway and I have to I have to stay true with what led me up to the Pyrenees to show me this place and I realize I've got to be true with this message as well but you understand that granite floats on magma you know, it, it, I told you it and then you saw it, how I told you that that would happen and you saw it happen on the 22nd of November when that, that, when that, when that big earthquake happened. Guys, it's been a long message, I, I, I know, but it's probably going to be my only message in, in, in Britain, but I want you to know that I've come back here to try and put maximum effort in to try and bring, uh, raise this vibration and do what I can all the way through this, you know, and you're going to have to engage in this if you want to get through this, because you're going to, you're going to be challenged, and you're not going to believe it's real until, until the round about the sort of like uh, late September, 23rd, 24th, and when those things start coming through, many systems might start going down, and so there's, I've tried to give you all the information of everything you need to know how to deal with that, I don't know much more than that. You know, I really don't. I'm I'm told a very spe spe specific amounts of information that with the that with the the elements that I'm working with in, in the process that I do in my writing and and in the process I do to to get the answers that I do. And um, and and I think that's probably as much as I I could actually handle knowing in myself. You know. So just know that you've changed so much in this country by by the result in that last election and the ball is so much in your court now more than in your court than you can ever realize you know you you hold the vibration of this country all of you in this in your hands and the future generations that can live on live on this in this country and indeed in this earth are there by the invitation that you afford them now by the efforts that you make now to keep the vibration of this earth as high as possible whilst they attempt to pull it down and turn this whole thing into an aggressive invasive kind of world attempt just to bring the whole realm into 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 a war for their specific agenda and their agenda is a much much more complicated thing that i can't really go into so much in this video but if you watch my mars videos you know about you know how, how how the water from the great flood came from came from Mars and and you can understand what is attempted to achieve by driving this whole plane into war because of all the souls that will be stranded on this earth if the if the platform on which the life exists is destroyed if there's nowhere for those souls to incarnate then you you have a ghost realm, you, have, you create a hungry ghost realm and that was what was created with Mars and that's what the subverted, subversive forces are attempting to do with Earth is turn it into a ghost realm. Raise the vibration, bring it up, keep the vibration high, everything you can do. This is your greatest challenge, this is why you came to this Earth for this time. Good luck. And, and honey in the heart, sending you all the love in the world. Good luck.